Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm an artist instructor at the Art Gallery of Ontario. I was recently inspired by a really cool artwork in the AGO collection called Composition Cube by an artist named Shubanaya Ashuna. This is a landscape drawing, so natural scenery, land, rocks, water, some houses, but it's not a traditional landscape. Usually landscape artworks are two-dimensional or flat and they can be hung on the wall. Ashuna's is three-dimensional, so it's a drawing that moves on the top and the sides of a cube. What I really like about this landscape is that we're allowed to see more than one view and we have to move around to see all the different parts of the drawing. Let's take this idea and make some three-dimensional landscape drawings of our own. I looked around my house for some three-dimensional objects that I could draw on. These are both from my recycling bin. That's a good place to look. Make sure to ask an adult first. Um, you'll also need some gesso. Gesso is a special white paint that will prepare the surface and it will help your drawing stick onto your object. You can find gesso at an art supply store. Or if you don't have gesso, you can use white tempera paint. You could also try um, white paper, gluing it on the edges of your three-dimensional object. This would work really well on a cardboard box. You'll also need a pencil and eraser. I also used a black fine tip marker, and then you'll need something to add color to your landscape drawing. Pencil crayons, crayons, even oil pastels will work. You're going to start by preparing the surface of your object by covering it with a layer of gesso. Once it's dried, which might take overnight, then you're ready to start drawing. While it's drying, you might choose to plan out your landscape on a piece of paper, thinking about the shape of your object and how that will influence what your drawing looks like, how the landscape will move around all the different sides of your object. My gesso has dried and I've started to draw my landscape. This one is inspired by the landscape that I see most, so my neighborhood. Yours could be a place that you've visited or you've, somewhere you've always wanted to go. You could look at photographs for ideas. Um, I'm drawing in pencil. And the thing that I was really thinking about when I was drawing this was how my drawing would extend all the way around. So I have these power lines and they extend all the way to every side of my drawing. So I'm going to show you the other side and you'll notice that I have gone over my pencil lines with a fine tip marker. I wanted them to stand out a little bit more, but you'll see that those lines extend around all sides. So here's the edge and then they're connecting again to the side that I'm working on. Um, I also want to show you the top. So I have my clouds, my sky has extended to the top of the cardboard box as well. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to outline my pencil lines on this side and then I'm going to start to add some color. I'm going to keep working on this one, but I have two finished landscapes to show you. I really like the shape of this juice bottle. I especially liked the lines coming down from the top. I imagine those as maybe um, sunbeams that you see sometimes peeking through clouds, extending down. And then I decided to do just a simple mountain landscape. So I have mountains that wrap all the way around, um, some green hills, and trees and then on this side if you see that I have a river and that river flows down to the bottom and continues on each side of the bottle. The second one that I finished is an old baking powder container and this one was a really nice cylinder. I decided to do a farm landscape so some fields, more green hills, barns, lots of sky and then I also extended that sky and clouds onto the top of my container. I really enjoyed drawing on this shape. Thanks so much for watching. 
I hope you try some three-dimensional landscape drawing at home, and if you do, be sure to take a photo and tag us at AGO Makes.